There are many amateur sources showing measurements of the volumetric airflow into a vacuum cleaner using a vane anemometer. This is either attached to the end of an open hose or through a hole in a box the cleaner sucks through. This video explains why these measurements can overestimate the true air currents. This is the typical setup shown where measurements are taken from an open hose. The flow direction is from a quiescent atmosphere into the anemometer, through a conical reducer, and into the narrower tube of the vacuum cleaner hose at lower pressure. A vane anemometer measures the local air velocity based on a factory calibration from the resulting fan rotation speed, and then calculates the volumetric flow rate using this simple internal formula. However, its internal processing assumes that air flows uniformly and perpendicularly through the sensing head. When attached to the reducer or any pipe, this assumption breaks down because fluid flow becomes non-uniform. Unintuitively, the shape of the radial air velocity profile downstream of the anemometer determines how the upstream air accelerates through the vein due to quirks of fluid dynamics. Even though the ambient air is initially at rest, it's drawn towards the anemometer by the low pressure downstream generated by the vacuum cleaner. This pressure drop acts like a funnel and flow converges radially inward toward the lower diameter of the reduced exit orifice. The flow accelerates most along the centre line, producing a centre peaked profile even upstream of the reducer, i.e. the anemometer. This shapes the air velocity profile radially along the anemometer orifice. Unless this is corrected for the bounded geometry, the instrument is no longer measuring the assumed average velocity. These devices are usually centre weighted, so the higher velocity in the centre is assumed to exist across the whole orifice, when in reality the average is much lower. The instrument therefore overestimates the airspeed in this case, and thus the volumetric airflow. You can calculate the approximate magnitude of this overestimation. The radial velocity profile in ducts and open channel flows is typically described by a power law. This just describes how the velocity drops off as you move away from the center of this measurement setup where it's the highest. The exact profile would need to be calculated either by solving the Navier-Stokes equation or using a computational fluid dynamics model, which is obviously impractical for the purpose of this video. This power law profile is a reasonable first order approximation. The value of n is determined by the level of turbulence in the flow, which we can easily calculate from the Reynolds number, which you can work for yourself if you're interested. The value is about 103,000 and deep in the turbulent regime, as you'd expect. Back in our power law profile equation, this means the value of n ranging from 7 to 10 is representative. To calculate the true airflow from the value the anemometer reads, you need to calculate the velocity profile correction factor, c, which is the ratio of average to maximum velocities. The anemometer measures the center velocity and assumes this is the velocity across the whole vein which it isn't in this setup. The true airflow requires the average velocity, which is determined by integrating the velocity profile over the whole cross-sectional area. This is fairly easy to do. There's approximately cylindrical symmetry in the flow, and so air velocity only depends on the radius and not the angle, making it easy to work in polar coordinates. An infinitesimal area element is the product of the radius and angle elements, this can be substituted in and integrated over each coordinate. Fortunately, the velocity is only a function of radius and not the angle, so this integral simplifies. Now we have an expression for the average velocity and can substitute in the power law expression for the radial velocity profile. You can solve this integral using substitution to find an expression for the average velocity in terms of the maximum center velocity, and therefore for the ratio of the two, which is our correction factor. Solving this for values of n across our target range of 7 to 10 yields the two correction factors. These can now be used to calculate the corrected airflow measurement. A measurement value of 170 CFM, or about 80.2 litres per second, is actually only between 132 and 142 CFM, so about 17 to 22% less. There are a number of other variable factors such as flow convergence and swell due to the reducer geometry, and edge effects and inlet distortion that could add another several percent to the overestimated value, but I'm not going through them here for brevity. 
These fundamental problems also exist using an airflow box, and with typical configurations shown in amateur videos, may be worse, since the air is forced to turn, leading to further turbulence and swell. There are many other methods that can be used to measure airflow. You could machine a very precise orifice plate in a duct and measure the pressure drop across it and then use the Bernoulli equation and discharge coefficient across it to determine flow rate. You could also measure the mass flow to calculate volume flow but would need a very expensive mass flow controller. Another method is to use a calibrated hot wire probe to measure at multiple points along the tube to establish the radial velocity profile function to integrate over and apply a correction factor as before. Although many hot wire probes are comparable in size to the orifice and may interfere with the flow itself. All these methods have their challenges and sources of error. Perhaps the simplest method is to understand what airflow is and construct a simple measurement setup to measure it directly without expensive equipment or relying on indirect methods that need assumption ridden calculations. Airflow is simply a measure of the volume of air that flows each second. It's why it has dimensions of meters cubed per second. A given number of meters cubed of volume flow per second. It's that simple. Although you can convert to silly and outdated imperial units of cubic feet per minute, or CFM for short, that some parts of the world unfortunately still use. Incidentally, I've seen some post sources define airflow as the speed of a volume of air, which is absolutely incorrect and shows a serious misunderstanding of basic science. It's important to identify and disregard such sources. So, if you have a known volume, you can time how long it takes to move it through the cleaner. This is very easy to do. You just get a large flexible bag that you know the volume of, such as a bin liner. This is a small 30 litre one in my case, and the approximate dimensions measured confirm this. Attach it to the cleaner hose, and use plasticine, blue tack, putty, or some other malleable material to plug gaps. You can inflate the bag to its maximum volume with a little help from the exhaust of the machine if you don't fancy blowing it up yourself. This doesn't put it at over pressure, it just ensures that there's the correct volume of air at ambient pressure. Then suck it out and time how long it takes to block. You need to make sure you help the bag collapse and deform in a way that doesn't prematurely block the hose. In this example, the floor helps it deform obediently. When there's no air left, the bag is scrunched up and any good machine will stall to protect the motor from overheating. If you measure how long this collapse took, since you know the volume, you can directly determine the volumetric air current without any assumptions. It's the most direct measurement there is without professional equipment. It's easier to do this with as large a bag with no volume you can find, especially with high throughput machines that will collapse it very quickly. I only had small bags and used eco mode on the Gen 5 for this just to illustrate the point and proof of concept. It's also important to ensure not to drain the bag whilst a slow motor is starting up on old fashioned mains machines, which is easily solved with the diverter valve if anyone wants to do the measurement properly. The Gen 5 starts instantly and so avoids this problem. I compare this measurement to the reading you get from an anemometer. The tube was the same diameter as the vein and attached to the inlet. You can see the data here. This is averaged over many repeated tests to ensure reproducibility. In this particular case, for my setup and parts used, the anemometer overestimated by a factor of two. While airflow measurements are commonly seen in amateur videos, the magnitude of the volumetric air current is not a parameter of relevance for the acceleration of particles in a fluid flow. The air speed, i.e. the speed of any magnitude of volumetric airflow, determines the force imparted on a particle and is controlled by the large pressure difference of strong suction in the bounded venturi system that is the cleaner head. The properties of the dirt particle and the carpet they're embedded within are also relevant considerations to dirt removal. This is covered in great detail in my lecture on the topic, which I'd encourage you to watch. I hope you found this video useful.